Okay, here's something I couldn't resist on eBay. Uh, somebody was selling a filter uh, with two SMA connectors on it. Um, it's labeled uh, 400 to 470 megahertz low pass. So usually when they give a range, that's for a band pass, but this is definitely a low pass filter. Um, so I guess the component selection is pretty sloppy, so uh, the cutoff's going to be somewhere between 400 and 470, I guess. Uh, it seems kind of strange why they would label it that way. Um, let me uh, let me let me get a different lens and we'll we'll zoom into this and uh, take a closer look at it. All right. Um, so, oops. So we can see the um, components here. We have a, a SMA input, SMA output. Probably is symmetric, so probably doesn't matter which is in, or which is out. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine capacitors, and three inductors. And um, they're in a particular sequence. And that's something I recognize. So um, I have a book, and we can look in the book, and we can try to figure out what type of filter this is, and what we can expect from it. And then we'll go to the spectrum analyzer and sweep this filter, and uh, see what it really does. All right, this is a book that I bought uh, many, many years ago. Um, I had the need to design a filter, the only filter I've really ever had to design in my life. Um, most of them are easy, right? You know, a single pole or something, you know, low pass, high pass, something. Very easy. Um, but I actually needed a pretty sophisticated filter, and so I bought this book. And this is a great book. Um, I think you can still get copies of this. Um, uh, it's very good, especially for active filters, uh, which is what I wanted it for, uh, to design an active filter. An active filter is basically the same type of filter that uh, L's and C's and R's and stuff are in. Um, but you put in op amps so it doesn't lose anything along the way. The feedbacks are, are with op amps and, and it keeps the signal up. Um, so uh, let's take a look inside the book here. Page marked. Um, and let's look at this particular... I think it's something uh, heavy to weigh this down with. Stapler works. All right. Um, let's zoom in on, on this thing here. Um, I've just lost my pencil. There it is. So this is exactly what we saw um, in the uh, in the actual device. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, uh, capacitors, and this one had uh, capacitors feeding in and out. They don't do anything to the circuit. There's just a capacitor on the input and capacitor on the output. But this is this is really what's going on in the filter. And uh, so, since there's seven uh, devices, basically seven lumps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be a seven-pole filter. Um, or seventh order, I should say. It's got poles and zeros, but um, it's a seventh order filter, and it's of a particular type. Um, I believe if you take off these three capacitors here, so you just have L's on the throughs and and um, capacitors to ground. I believe that's a Chebyshev filter, um, but this particular type of filter is an elliptical filter. I'm not really fam familiar with elliptical filters. Um, but uh, they have some, uh, like a Chebyshev, uh, they have some ringing in the pass bands, um, and um, they have a nice table here so you can design filters. But let's look on the next page. I think the next page was interesting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this page. Um, stapler out again. Okay, um, so uh, these are some filters with actual component values on them and uh, this graph here is the interesting one because this is a, is a, a low pass filter. Um, so we have a pass band and then we have some uh, rippling in the rejection um, but we have a nice uh, fast 
uh, uh, fall here, it says it's 70 dB. So um, 70 dB of rejection at this little peak here. It bumps back up to minus 60, but all the ripples are below minus 60, so it's quite an efficient filter. Um, so hopefully this is what we'll see when we go to, uh, to measure this thing. We would expect to see uh, the uh, at 3 dB, uh, which would be somewhere just, just in that little bend right there, uh, we would expect that uh, frequency to be somewhere around 400 to 470 um, hertz, uh, kilo, uh, megahertz, right? Uh, yeah, megahertz. 400 to 470 megahertz we should see where this cutoff is here. Um, so we can measure that and uh, see what's going on. Not sure why this filter was made. Um, it was only eight dollars, which is cheap for filters. Um, and uh, I don't know why on eBay, but they had a whole bunch of them, so I figured I'd get one just to play with. So let's go out in the garage and uh, Hook this up to the spectrum analyzer and see what it does. Okay, uh, so we have the uh, the filter in line now. Here we have uh, two two BNCs, uh, uh, one coming out of uh, this BNC and going into that BNC. So we're uh, generating uh, uh, signals and receiving signals, and this is in line and. Um, the way that we're going to use this is uh, with the tracking generator and just to save some time I've saved saved the setup here low pass filter and it's a little slow so there we go Let's zoom in on this Alright, so we can see that it has a low pass behavior, uh, it has a bump here. Um, it has an unpredicted bump up here, that shouldn't be there, so something in the lump network isn't quite right. Um, so what our settings here are currently is uh, we have a 500 megahertz center, and um, we have uh, a relative, we've zeroed out the instrument so that uh, 0 dBm is straight through. Uh, you can um, first uh, replace uh, the, the unit under test with just a connector uh, that goes straight through and take out any drops in your cables or anything. You, you can run uh, a scan first and say that's 0 dBm so it remembers that scan and makes everything uh, relative uh, to 0. You can see that uh, we have um, uh, 10 dB per uh, vertical increment. So our ripple in the passband is quite small, uh, which is good. And we have about uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65 dB uh, at the smallest uh, dip here. And it pops back up to uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 48 dB, which isn't as good as the book would say it should be. Um, but that may have to be uh, due to this bump here as well. It's not this uh, particular filter is not tuned exactly right. But the interesting thing is that the filter was advertised as uh, 400 to 470 megahertz low pass, and in the description on eBay it calls it a 433 um, uh, megahertz filter. So obviously this looks a little long. So let's uh, let's turn on a marker. Uh, go to markers and position. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little dot, the dot that's zipping around there, and uh, we can. Uh, oops, make that a little finer. There we go. So uh, if we come up to the 3 dB point, which is uh, right here, it says minus. Three and a half. There we go. Minus 2.9. So we're at the 3 dB point of the filter, and we're reading uh, 564 megahertz. So this filter is very long, according to its uh, specification. Um, maybe that's why they're on eBay. They're out of spec or something. But uh, I imagine that it probably does its job. It's uh, uh, passing everything. 
uh, below 560, uh, 470, 560, maybe that's okay. Uh, like the first harmonic of 400 would be 800, so it's certainly going to cut out anything above 800. But anyway, I do believe the filter's out of spec. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, one thing I wanted to try was uh, to bend one of those um, inductors. They're just uh, coiled, and I could reach in and uh, bend the inductor and change the inductance of one of these. So let me do that on the last one. So I have spread that coil a little bit. Did that do anything? Not much, did it? No, I didn't. Really didn't spread that at all. Uh, when I'm holding it, it does. Let me let me spread that a little bit more. Yeah, it changed a little, little bit. Let me change the spread the first one out too. Yeah, it's not really yeah, a little bit. It does change it a little bit, but not not enough to to really do any damage here. I'll squeeze those back. A lot of times you'll see radios where there's a, a, a air wound coil like this, and you'll see one coil kind of off on its own, like somebody reached in and and flopped it down. Um, and that's a way that they tune radios. They'll actually have more coils than they need, and they'll just uh, kind of uh, bend one one winding out of the way so it's no longer really contributing um, allows you to tune a little bit but the capacitors are probably a little bit off on this particular design um, we could go in and and measure those but uh, they'd be hard to measure in circuit because it's a pi network um, so I think uh, we would have to remove them and put in new new values if we really wanted to tune this thing but I wasn't really interested in that. I just kind of wanted to see how good the filter was. And actually, I'm pretty impressed. Um, like I say, the uh, the uh, band pass here is uh, is quite good. We can zoom in a little bit. Um, the reason it, the reason we get this message here, generator sweep truncated, is because I'm I'm centered at 500, but I'm sweeping a gigahertz worth of uh, a signal, plus or minus 500. And the generator doesn't, doesn't go to zero, and so it's giving me a little error here because it's not going to zero. Um, so let's go, uh, let's see here, let's go to main. Let's kind of zoom in on all this stuff. So we'll start here at, uh, we'll, we'll kind of sweep from, let's say, 500 to, let's say 500 to a gigahertz. Uh, that would be interesting. So let's center it at 750, 750 megahertz, and we'll sweep, um, uh, 500. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so we'll kind of zoom in on this part a little bit more. Uh, this is quite troubling some though, this, this bump here, that should not be there. It should fall right away. So there's some wrong value maybe, um, in the network that's causing this, uh, this bump here. Um, some capacitors out of whack. Um, it really, really should fall quite. It should, it should look like this curve here all the way up. Uh, shouldn't be that, shouldn't be that dip there. So, anyway, if you want to buy one of these just to play with, okay. If you want to buy one of these to actually use it, eh, it's, you know, reasonable but not great. <laughs>